Today, God is no longer dealing with the nation of Israel. He's no longer dealing with the Abraham and his seed, his physical seed. Today, God has a ministry to all mankind. And in the books of Romans through Philemon, the 13 books of the Apostle Paul, God explains his grace. Have you ever noticed that the Apostle Paul starts every epistle, grace and peace? Well, let's go to before the board as, as we look at the book of Galatians. Um, the key to understanding the Bible is found in 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15 in your King James Bible. Paul says in order to study the Bible, we must rightly divide the scriptures. Simply put, right division of the Bible is time past, but now, and the ages to come. The books of Genesis through Acts, they're God's program in time past. It's written by Moses and the prophets. It has to do with God's law program. It's called prophecy, that which was spoken by the mouth of all God's holy prophets since the world began. The primary people of issue with, that, with those epistles are the nation of Israel, and it has to do with God's earthly kingdom. Now, in Acts chapter 9, when God changed the program because of Israel's rebellion and their unbelief, God sent us, the Gentiles, the Apostle Paul. Now, every man, both Jew and Gentile, has to come to God through the Lord Jesus Christ, but not his Messiahship. Not him being the Messiah, the Christ, the Lord of Israel, the King of Israel. Today, you, there's no way to, to God the Father but through the cross of the Lord Jesus Christ, his death, his burial, and his resurrection. That's the, the but now, the present. The 13 books of Paul, Romans through Philemon, teach the grace message. It's written by Paul. He wrote more books of your Bible than any man. Moses wrote five. John wrote five. Paul wrote 13, more than twice any other man, okay? It's the grace message. It's called the mystery of Christ. Now, Christ was known according to prophecy with Israel. God presented his son, Jesus Christ, to Israel according to what he made known through the prophets and through Moses. But there was a preaching of Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the mystery that God kept secret until revealed to the Apostle Paul. That message of Christ goes out to the Gentiles, to the nations. That's the word. Gentiles and nations are the same word, okay? Gentiles mean the nations all nations and today we're dealing with God's heavenly kingdom today the body of Christ is being formed to rule and reign in the heavens Genesis 1 1 the Bible says the first verse of your Bible says in the beginning God created the heaven and the earth and since that time God had been dealing with the earth and the second verse and the earth was without form and void God only dealt with the earth but when we get to the Apostle Paul and his salvation and his 13 books God is now dealing with the heavens. Until that time that where Paul was saved, God didn't reveal how he was going to rule and reign in the heavens. That's, how, that's why he created the body of Christ, to rule up there. Now, with an event called the rapture of the church, the body of Christ, at the end of the present dispensation of grace, the rapture or what the Bible calls the resurrection, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 is called the catching away. When God does that and the body of Christ goes home to the heavenly places, God will once again begin his program of prophecy with the nation of Israel. He will fulfill his promise to Abraham and his physical seed, those who believe on Christ. It's going to be the books of Hebrews through Revelation that explains the future. It's written by the Jewish apostles. It has to do with the kingdom law that Christ is going to give. It has to do with prophecy, the end of all prophetic scripture. It's the nation of Israel once more, and he will set up his earthly kingdom, he being the Lord Jesus Christ. But until then, God is working through the books of the Apostle Paul for our obedience. And Galatians is one of those books. Last time we left off in Galatians chapter 5, let's look at verse 10. Paul, after explaining to the Galatians that if they allowed even the smallest, the, even the smallest religious legalism in their assembly. Look at verse 9, Galatians chapter 5 verse 9. A little leaven leaveneth the whole lump. Paul says leaven is sin in the Bible. Leaven is the, 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 the type of, of, we might know it today as yeast. When you put yeast in bread, it, it, it gets all into the dough. You can just put a little bit, but it gets into that dough. Well, that's what leaven is. Leaven is in the Bible is sin or that which is tasty to the flesh, appeals to your flesh. Well, Paul says if you allow a little religious legalism in your body of Christ, in that local assembly, it will destroy the whole assembly. Now in verse 10, look what Paul says. I have confidence in you through the Lord 
that ye will be none otherwise minded. But he that troubleth you shall bear his judgment, whosoever he be. Now in verse, in verse 10, as Paul is concluding this book in chapters 5 and, and, and 6, he says, I have confidence in you through the Lord. You know, the Apostle Paul always thought the best of people. And that's what we ought to do as believers. But he never had this optimistic attitude unless he, he, he had truth with it. He wasn't a pushover either. He, he, he didn't just say things just hoping things would get better. His confidence was in them was through the Lord. Look at that verse. I have confidence in you through the Lord. Paul did not put his confidence in man, and you ought not either. You know, my friend, the reason I tell you to get your Bible is because I want you to look at the verses with me. Don't you ever take a man's word for it because, see, a man is fallible. I never intend to lie to you from the scriptures, but it's possible that I could. The fact is, the Bible says, let God be true and every man a liar, and the only thing you can trust is not my mouth, but the written word of God. And for you in your language, it's the King James Bible. It's the only Bible in the English language without error. That's why I say get your Bible and your pen and paper and you study these things out on your own. I'm here to help you, but it's between you and the Lord. And that's why we look at the verses. But look at what Paul says I, in verse 10 of chapter 5 of Galatians. I have confidence in you through the Lord. You know, my friend, God wants you to see man the way he does. God is down on man because of sin, and God lifts himself up because he's holy. You know, you're not to trust a human being. And we all have relationships, and, and, and there are people who find themselves trustworthy when we test them out. Your wife, your husband, your children, that type of things, and that's fine. But see, they're still human, and they can let you down. The only thing you can trust for certain is the written word of God. And that's why God wrote down his word through the Apostle Paul. And Paul says, as he gave the Galatians the word of God, I have confidence in you through the Lord. Paul trusted that the Holy, God, Holy Spirit of God in them, which they received when they trusted Christ, you, did you know that when you believe that you're a sinner and that Jesus Christ paid for your sins on the cross, he shed his blood for you, God gives you his Holy Ghost the moment you trust him. Write down these verses, Ephesians chapter 1, verse 13, Romans 5, verse 5. They, those verses say that the moment you trust Christ, God gives you his Holy Ghost. Now, when, he, when you have his Holy Ghost as a believer, the next thing he gives you is the Word of God, the written Word of God. And Paul understood that a person who has the Holy Ghost, and everyone who trusts that Christ died for their sins has it, and when they take the word of God through the Apostle Paul, that God the Holy Ghost can work through that word through Paul, and God, Paul had confidence that it could work. I exhort you today, get saved, trust the, Christ, the cross of Christ, and then believe the words that your Apostle Paul read, uh, wrote to you, read those words and study them and believe them, and God can work through you. And that's the confidence Paul had. Now, now let's look at that. Paul says, I have confidence in you through the Lord. Not in them, the men, but in those saints, God in them. It's the word of God that Paul had confidence in. Now look what he says in verse 10. I have confidence in you through the Lord that ye will be none otherwise minded. Now what does he mean by that? Well, for the first four and a half chapters, the apostle has been telling them he's their apostle. He's been telling them the things that I write unto you are for you to obey. And he says, if any man among them thought otherwise. See, my friend, there were men coming to that assembly preaching that Paul wasn't the only one for them to obey. That they ought to go back here and obey Moses or the prophets or Jesus Christ according to the prophetic program, his earthly ministry. And they forgot what Jesus Christ gave Paul, that Jesus Christ gave Paul a preaching of Christ that no man knew. And that was Paul's ministry. And anybody who came and tried to take them away from this truth, Paul says, if you're otherwise minded, guess what? God will deal with them. Look at the rest of the verse. But he that troubleth you shall bear his judgment, whosoever he be. You understand that when Paul commands us to rightly divide the word of truth, to make a distinction between what God wrote today and what he wrote in time past and in the future to the nation of Israel, that when you don't do that, you're going to trouble your soul. 
And when you're under teaching that doesn't magnify the office of the Apostle Paul, not the man, his office, and doesn't rightly divide the scriptures separating law from grace, prophecy from mystery, the nation of Israel from the body of Christ. When you don't do that, or when you're sitting under teaching that does not do that, Paul says that he troubleth you. And by the way, it's going to be men. It's going to be humans, men, women, anybody who teaches the Bible, who doesn't rightly divide the scriptures, will trouble you. And let's see what Paul says about that. But he that troubleth you shall bear his judgment. You know, God doesn't take lightly people who teach his word, but who do not rightly divide the word. One day, God will deal with those people who do that. What Paul says, he that troubleth, troubleth you shall bear his judgment, whosoever he be. It doesn't matter if it's your pastor, if it's your father, it doesn't matter who the teacher is. If that person is not teaching the scriptures rightly divided, Paul says he will bear his judgment. God will judge that person. Now, if that person's a believer, someone who's a saint, someone who's trusted Christ as their savior, that he died on the cross for their sins, there's an incident, there, I mean, there's an event called the judgment seat of Christ. At the judgment seat of Christ. The judgment seat of Christ. That is an event right after the rapture. The next thing on the agenda is this judgment seat. Only believers go there. So that person who uses God's word but doesn't rightly divide it and doesn't stick to the message of Paul, that person will suffer loss at the judgment seat of Christ. He will bear his judgment. He will lose out on the reward of the inheritance. Those who stick to the scriptures rightly divide it, magnify what Paul says about it, they will get a reward. Now, that's for believers. Now, if that man who teaches the Bible, who doesn't rightly divide the scriptures, if he's a lost man, if he doesn't trust the cross of Christ, he will be at the great white throne judgment. The great white throne judgment. That's the judgment out here after the thousand-year kingdom of Christ in the future, okay? This is where all the lost of the ages, from Cain on through, and they're going to be sent into the lake of fire, the lake of fire. Right down here, there's a lake of fire, okay? Either way, whether saved or lost, there's a judgment, and these guys who were teaching the wrong message to these believers, to these grace believers, people who were saved by Paul's gospel, God is going to deal with them. Now, my friend, you don't have to be a part of that. First of all, you could be saved. You trust Christ, what he did on the cross, that he died for your sins. And if you're saved, you need to believe what your apostle Paul wrote about the Lord Jesus Christ. Well, that's where we're at. Uh, let's look at some of these things. Paul says, he that troubleth you shall bear his judgment. Look at verse 12. I'm sorry, verse, uh, yeah, look at verse 12. I would that they, I'm sorry, I would they were even cut off, which trouble you. You know, that word cut off means to be cast away, destroyed. The Apostle Paul loved these saints so much, and you and I today, if you're a believer, he loved you so much that he says if people are preaching God's word but not exalting his office and rightly dividing the scriptures and teaching the grace message, Paul says, I wish that they were cut off. That word cut off is used in the scriptures from the Old Testament on. In Israel, when a man was not circumcised or when he did something that went against what Moses said, God says, Cut that man off from the nation. He won't be part of the covenant blessings. He was to be destroyed. He was to be cast away. What well, Paul says, men, he was talking about, by the way, save men. Men who were in the body of Christ but, and were supposed to teach the saints the grace message. They were supposed to teach the saints the message given to the apostle Paul, and they didn't. Paul says, I wish they were cast away. Don't let them trouble the body of Christ. No, my friend, he took this serious. He says, I wish that those that trouble you were destroyed. Look at me, look with me at chapter 4 of Galatians, look at verse 17. Chapter 4 of Galatians, verse 17. Speaking of these men who were teaching the Galatians but not teaching them what Paul taught them, he says, they zealously affect you but not well. Yea, they would exclude you that ye might affect them. 
What is Paul talking about there? He says that these men were coming preaching this law, preaching a performance-based acceptance system. It's the opposite of grace. They, these men weren't preaching the grace message that Paul gave them. They put them back under a dead system called the law. And Paul says they were zealously affecting them. They literally had these Galatians thinking this is the program. The law is the program, right? He, they, they affected them through their using good words and fair speeches to deceive the hearts of these simpletons. No, Paul says, look what he says. Yea, in verse 17 of chapter 4, he says, they zealously affect you, but not well. See, God gave his word to give you profit, to grow from, to be well, wholesome, wholesome words. And these guys weren't giving them wholesome words. He was giving them words of no profit. Paul says in the rest of chapter 4 of Galatians, verse 17, yea, they would exclude you. What does that mean? It means exclude them from Paul, that ye might affect them. See, the message that God gave Paul, it takes away from the flesh. You know, the only thing that's magnified with the cross is the grace of God. See, reason man doesn't like what Paul preaches is because he can't boast in his flesh. See, religion hates this message of grace. See, religion wants you to be on that treadmill working to boost your flesh, and then if you get your flesh boosted and you feel good, they get more people and they feel good. Look what he says. They would exclude you from me, Paul says, that ye might affect them. You know, they wanted disciples for themselves. God has centered everything in his son, and his son, Jesus Christ, has given everything to the apostle Paul. If you're going to know God today, you're going to know him through the Lord Jesus Christ. But my friend, if you're going to know the Lord Jesus Christ today, the only way you're going to get to know him is through Romans, through Philemon, the 13 books of the Apostle Paul. Now, the only reason somebody would not teach you this is that they're trying to get you away from Paul, and they're trying to draw you closer to them. It's called religion. You know what religion is. It means to bind yourself back to God. The word religion, re, again, Legio, you know how you have a ligament in your knees, it keeps you together? Well, it's to bind it together. And religion says, I'll bind myself back to you, God. And God says, I don't want your religious works. They're all filthy rags, even your righteous works. Hey, I did something for you. I died on the cross. God shed his blood on the cross in the person of the Lord. And instead of you binding yourself back, religion, God binds himself back. There's one mediator between God and man the man Christ Jesus, Paul said. So, these guys want to get you to leave the Apostle Paul. Well, you're not going to do that, are you? No. Go with me, if you will, to um, go back to Galatians chapter 1. Let's look at one more verse. Look at verse 7. Galatians chapter 1, verse 7. You know, what to do when trouble comes. You know, your life is trouble when... Um, you don't stick to the message of the Apostle Paul. Watch what he says. Verse 7, Galatians 1, verse 7. Speaking of, look at verse 6. I marvel that you are so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel. Now, my friend, how did the Galatians get the gospel? Through Paul, right? What gospel did he preach? The gospel of the grace of God, that Christ died for your sins according to the scriptures? He was buried, and, and on the third day he rose again, according to the scriptures. That's the gospel of grace. Now, when Paul says, I marvel that you are so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ, who is that? From Paul. Paul's the one who called them into the grace of Christ through preaching the gospel. Look at verse 7. Another gospel. By the way, it's the gospel of the kingdom. See, the only other gospel that was out there in Paul's day that God had put away was the gospel of the kingdom. That's the Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and Acts gospel. Repent and be water baptized for the remission of the sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost, and God will send back Jesus, and he'll establish his kingdom. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Well, when Paul is on the scene, that thing is on hold. It's, it's for the future. Well, that was the gospel that these guys came preaching to these grace believers. And he says, it's not another. It's not really good news. The term gospel means good news. 
It's not good news to tell somebody to, be re to repent and be water baptized for the remission of their sins. God will give them the Holy Ghost and he'll bring a kingdom. Because that's not the message for today. Watch this. Verse 7, which is not another. But there be some that trouble you. You see, when Paul looks at it, you know, man looks at it and says, well, I'm going to go to a biblically based church, to a good Bible teaching, preaching church. And that sounds good to your ears, doesn't it? It really does. Paul says, it'll trouble you. See, it's not enough to be biblical. It's not enough to be scriptural. You need to be dispensational. The problem at Galatia is they were preaching the Bible. They just weren't rightly dividing the Bible. They had these grace-believing saints back in an old dead program called the, pro the prophet for prophetic program. The gospel of the kingdom wasn't no longer in op operation. It was the gospel of grace. So it's not enough to be scriptural or biblical. That's just not enough. You, you ought to have a church that do that. But you need to be at a church that rightly divides the word of truth that separates God's program with Israel from his program with the body of Christ. You need to join us here at Twin Cities Grace Fellowship. Well, that's what Paul says. And look what they did at the end of verse 7. And they would pervert the gospel of who? Christ. See, the good news of Jesus Christ is that he died for, on the cross for your sins, was buried and rose again. And I'll tell you this, you'll never find that message outside of Paul's epistles. There's not a message that Christ died for individual Gentiles, was buried and rose again, and they can get eternal life in the body of Christ and live in the heavenly places, go to heaven when they die, outside of Paul's epistles. I have never seen it in Scripture because it's not there. No, my friend, the gospel for today is given to you through the Apostle Paul. Now, go back to Galatians chapter 5. God wants you to know his written word, and that's my goal with Unlock Your Bible. I termed it that because we're going to unlock the Bible. No longer will the Bible be confusing in a book that just sits collecting dust on your, on your mantle. Where you put your money in or you put a picture in or you get a little ditty out of Psalms. God wants you to know his Bible. He wants you to know his word. And that's why we created this show and that's why we exist as an as a assembly to help you understand and enjoy your Bible. Well, Paul says in verse 10 of Galatians 5, I have confidence in you through the Lord that ye will be none otherwise minded. You see, my friend, the Apostle Paul says, the things I tell you are the things your mind ought to focus on. And don't be otherwise minded. You ought not to be focusing on any other thing from the Scriptures. Now, he that troubleth you shall bear his judgment, whosoever he be. Okay? Doesn't matter who it is. He could be the mo world's most famous evangelist. Or well, the world's most famous this and that and the other. If that guy is not preaching the message that the Apostle Paul was given in Paul's epistles, and that alone, that for, the, for us today, for our obedience, he'll bear his judgment. Whether saved or lost, God will deal with him, okay? God takes this serious. Let's look at verse 11. Paul writes, And I, brethren, if I yet preach circumcision, why do I suffer persecution? Then is the offense of the cross ceased. Oh, my friend, we only got about four minutes, but you know what? I'm going to touch on this, but in the next session, you be with us next week because we're going to talk about that. There's a lot there. Paul says, and I, brethren. Paul's going to now focus on himself and say, hey, let me show you. The stuff I'm telling you, I do myself. I stick to the message Christ gave me. I don't go back to the Old Testament and to Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. You never noticed Paul never preached about the Christ's earthly ministry? The Apostle Paul, in his 13 books, never preached about the Lord Jesus Christ during his earthly ministry. Paul starts his preaching of Christ at the cross. He never goes back to the three and a half years of his earthly ministry or the 30 years of his infant life like Luke. Oh, no. He's, he starts at the cross work of Christ because that's a, the preaching of the cross. Look what he says. Verse 11, And I, brethren, if I yet preach circumcision... You know, my friend, today the issue is not so much circumcision like in Paul's day. You know, to be part of Israel's prophetic program, you had to be circumcised. That was the Abrahamic covenant. Eighth day, you circumcised the foreskin of that young man's flesh, and that you became part of the blessing of God. 
And Paul says, that's not how you get the blessing of God today. It's in Christ. Paul says in Ephesians 1 verse 3, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. If you trust Christ as your Savior, you're blessed. You don't need a physical circumcision like the, like the circumcision, the, the nation of Israel. And you know what? There were men preaching that you needed to be, be circumcised and keep the law. That's the whole book of Galatians. And Paul says, no, you don't. You don't need to be circumcised to get saved, Paul says, and you don't need to keep the law. Now, today, circumcision is not the big issue, is it? You know what today, what I substitute that for in my thinking? Water baptism. Today, the battle, the rage in, in, in Christianity, in religion is, do you or don't you need to be water baptized to be saved? Just this very day of this taping, I dealt with a man. I asked him, how do you get to heaven? You know what he told me? You have to be born again and be water baptized. That's not the message for today. And I was able to explain to him, that's not the message. The cross of Christ is the message. Now, we're going to get into this uh, 11th verse in the next session. But before we go in this session, let me ask you a question. Has anyone ever loved you enough to ask you that if you were to die this moment, God forbid, God forbid, I want you to live a long life but for the Lord. But if you were to die this moment, are you, do you know for sure where you're going to spend eternity? I mean, for sure. You know, there's only two places a man's soul can go when they die. Your body goes six feet under, but your soul is either going to go to hell, which is in the heart of the earth, the flames, or in the heavenly places with the Lord. And you determine that. Jesus Christ has already died on, to pay for your sins, my friend. He's just waiting for you to trust him in your heart. Not for your religious works, not going to church, not giving money, not cheer. Believing, faith. God says when you believe from your heart, your inner man, that Christ died to pay for your sins, that you're the sinner that he died for, God that moment will give you eternal life. Isn't that wonderful? That's grace. He'll forgive you all your sins, give you eternal life in heaven right now as a present possession. And all he says he wants you to do is to get in his word and find out the blessings he's put in his son. God wants to glorify his son, the Lord Jesus Christ, in you. My friend, trust the Lord Jesus Christ. Don't move a muscle. Don't pray a prayer. If you've made that decision, call me. I'm Ron Knight, 612-308-3939, unlockyourbible.com. We have free materials about the heavenly places. If you got saved, your home is going to be eternal in the heavens. You need to know about it. We did, a, we did a conference. I'll send you those tapes free of charge. I'll send you more information on these things. You need to know the Bible. Well, my friend, until next time, I'm Ron Knight saying, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen.